All right, YouTubers, I want to do a video on keeping warm in the cold when RVing. Um, why I'm starting off with these two guys is they're kind of the reason that I RV the way I RV. I usually go to campgrounds in the winter. It's cheaper. They're uh, usually knock the prices down a little bit. But for me, um, I do the propane furnace. But I don't like to leave a propane furnace running and not be there. So also with electricity, I, ju I just like to be careful. <laughs> the joys of trying to make a video when you got cats. All right, so we're back. And uh, I'm going to talk about keeping this place warm. Tricks I do, you might do them different. Let me shut this off. That's not the AC unit. It's the heat pump portion of it. Okay, this is... This is a regular garbage bag, and because it's cold outside, you get condensation sometimes on the inside, so I put this uh, towel along there, but I like to put a plastic bag in, in case there's any moisture. That's why another good thing is that dehumidifier I have, whether it's winter or summer, that thing really comes in handy. So let me show you what I'm going to do. This is my bathroom, and it's winterized, and for me honestly have time at storage so what i have in here is reflectix so i'm gonna get the reflectix out and show you what i do all right i have that piece all taped up because i've done this before and i'm gonna put it in place close these blinds and now we have another piece that we're gonna put in place now we'll put the second piece in Right there, pretty well. I On mine, I can tuck it behind the little lights, and that'll keep it good. I can use duct tape, too. I try not to do that. I try not to tape a lot of things up, but uh, that helps quite a bit. That really keeps a lot of the cold out of the back end. Now, the problem that I have... Where are they? There's one of the problems I have, and the other one's under the bottom. They like windows, so it's hard for me to cover them all up because they go a little frantic, but... And then we have another one here that I'm going to put in this window. Now on this side, I'm going to keep... I have another piece that fits, but um, I'm not going to put it in place because a day just go bonkers if they don't get a window. So I try to leave them one so, so they don't drive me crazy. All right, so uh, the front window... Normal people would put uh, Reflectix in the front window, but um, they're calm right now, so I've closed the curtain. They've seen all they needed to see for a while. I'm probably going to take a nap, but I can't get away with putting a windscreen in there because, again, these animals... As I've shown before in a video, these curtains... Um, my aunt helped me with these. This is a material called uh, Solarize, I think. It's very thin. But it helps definitely in the summer, and I would assume it's going to help me in the winter, too, as a light form of insulation on these otherwise very thin curtains. What I'm going to do now is because it's cold and I need heat, this is what I do. I'm at a campground, so I'm paying for electricity, so why would I use my propane furnace? This is an electric space heater. These are uh, removable tw tw twist ties. And this is a C-clamp. So this is the mount where the uh, flat screen, where the big old tube style TV went. So I'm going to use the C-clamp. I put a piece of paper there to try not to scar it up, you know. So we get that nice and tight. And we take this heater and we'll plug that in. Okay, so everyone is right to tell me that it is not efficient having the heat coming up from so high. I obviously know that. Well, not obviously, but I know that. The problem that I have, once again, is... Vinny. Vinny. Yeah, it's them. I don't want this down low. I don't want it anywhere where they can really get to it. Because as soon as you set something like this on a counter, they're f messing with it. If I set it on the floor, there's cat hair, there's the opportunity of fire and shorten out that I'm just not willing to deal with. So I put that one up high. I'll show you where I do some other ones at times later. 
one of the areas where some cold can get in and you feel like you lose a little heat maybe get some drafts of these double doors on an rv so i'll show you what i'll do so this is just another attempt to keep warm in the winter when you're in your rv um, i think the seals on my double door are fine are in good shape but you know you will lose some heat through there you'll you'll feel some cold draft coming in so i've just taken this old big blanket it's like quilted or something and i use a clip up there and tuck it along the top and then i drape it down there and keep the cold out and the warm in along with that and insulating the big door in the back helps a lot I don't think this makes me a rocket scientist. It's probably a very common thing to do, but little stuff like this helps. Helps a lot. We'll find more ways to One thing starting out, if you're going to boondock and you're not going to use electricity to try to keep it warm, I think, now again, I don't do it a lot, but from what I know, a Mr. Buddy might be the way to go because even if you're boondocking, your propane furnace is going to use a lot of your battery running the fan so those of you that are boondocking might want to consider a mr buddy but we're going to fire up the uh furnace here yeah key we're going to fire up the furnace is that okay all right there's the thermostat for my uh propane furnace so we're going to kick it on there you can hear it so even though i don't use this a lot it's a good idea to you know once a month at least once every other month fire things like this up make sure they're still functioning properly except for obviously since i've winterized some of the water things and take your killing i'm not going to move everything but i can feel it and i know that it's kicking out heat that's where my furnace comes out from under. So that's good enough. And I'm going to turn it off. All right, Kiki, I'm going to turn it off. All right, we turned it off, Kiki. I'll take the fan. The fan will wait a minute before it shuts down. But, but as I'm saying, if you're boondocking, that running that fan on your furnace will use up a lot of your juice. So I believe that's why many, many people use uh, a Mr. Buddy instead and don't have to worry about draining your batteries dry. All right, YouTubers, since uh, the cats are in calm down mode, I want to show you what I got going on here. This is the uh, floor insert that I almost never travel with except in the winter. Why? Obviously because coal comes from the floor. So uh, I'll pull that out. And there you go and under this side is just a carpet and that'll help add some insulation but I'll show you in a minute this makes it uh this makes it uh I like it out of there most of the time just because head clearance so you saw that side and I gotta be thorough over thorough I'll show you the other side You'll also see is this is a foam pad I've had forever. It's to cover up the carpet mainly, but in the winter it also does a good job of adding some more insulation because way back under there is a trap door that goes down to my uh, underground storage, my basement or whatever you might want to call it in a small RV. And I think that probably helps keep the air out. So let's open this up. All right, so under this, again, this is a piece of wood coated with carpet, so that's going to help add insulation. You could even stuff towels or insulation or whatever. And if you see that silver there, that's duct tape. I put that down just in case I'm traveling without the floors in place. And cat water, their drinking dish gets spilled quite a bit. So I've covered that, so if I uh, go RVing and, and it were to refreeze down there, I don't have to worry about it. So that's just me going a little too far probably but uh yeah so this adds to insulation pretty well this helps quite a bit putting the floor in like i said i don't travel with it very often because of what it does when it's in there and i'll show you that okay so if you can see this is uh 
this is what happens when I'm in here again I'm 510 and with this floor down in there I'm right there at these with the floor being all the way in um, still doing the Grizzly Adams thing I think this is gonna go away soon I don't normally travel with the floor in here but just wanted to show that in the winter it, it does do a lot of help you just if you were any taller than five foot ten you'd be in trouble that is really close I got to be careful I'm much happier without the floor in but when it's cold you do what you do so uh, I'll show you some more things that's enough of that okay more ways to keep warm in the RV this is a electric blanket very nice electric blanket it is also a very 12 volt electric blanket so it can be plugged into a couple places I can plug it in right there to the onboard battery and boom you have a very comfortable warming up electric blanket that sometimes the cats like to use more than I do what else I got you can also use a heating pad to keep warm I actually used it last night it worked great if, you, if one's not enough you can have two an old school one and how do you use these well if you're hooked up to power you plug them into power if you're not I've shown this before this is my Duracell battery pack so if I didn't have access to power and didn't want to run a generator turn that on plug this puppy in here and there you go you got a heating pad to help keep you warm it's a wonderful life heating pads are awesome ideas and let's be honest one of the great things about a class b is that they're small i could probably just run it off the heater engine you know just run the engine all night if i wanted to obviously i don't want to do that but it's small enough that this would keep this heated up there are other things you can do there's always things you can do all right and you can also see back there i have a sleeping bag um i usually at least bring one and uh and i have back here one and there's a second one back there two extra electric heaters that i haven't needed for this trip um because the cats i gotta keep it warm when i'm not around and i'm in ohio so you don't have a lot of access to good uh boondocking places it's not you know, there's no blm land here so you really don't get that option very much so the difference between paying to camp with no power and paying to camp with power is so small that it's silly to do it the first hour i would burn up more propane than i'm going to use in the difference in paying for a campground so to me paying to camp when you're uh in the east is something that's not terrible something you do especially if you have pets all right i turned it off to show you but uh my uh ac unit also has a heat option and i use this quite a bit and as I said with the propane furnace, I know I plug in all other space heaters. When I leave the RV, this is the only thing I like to keep running. You know, I'm hooked up to power, but I don't feel as comfortable keeping electric little space heaters plugged in when I'm not in here. So uh, that's how I do it. It can get a little colder when it's real cold, but they can survive. <laughs> Hopefully I at least bumped into some useful information. Have a great and wonderful day.